Okay. So hello everyone. First of all, I would start I would like to start by thanking the team of Ethnojana Foundation since this has been a team effort. We have discussed these topics and we have brought with us this presentation to share with you today. So we have titled it Uncovering the Veil of Immaterial Cultural Heritage towards, oh, sorry, towards an autonomous management of well-being as well as cultural and territorial preservation. And we have decided to focus on the case of the Piaroa, indigenous people of Mataven Forest, which is located in the Colombian Amazonia. So first, I would like to start by talking a bit about Ethnojana Foundation and the type of work that we do. So we have been working in the Amazon region for more than 30 years, mm -hmm. and we have focused our work in four different areas. The first one is governance and environmental management. We've got women's health and gender, intercultural education, and community economies. This includes handicraft production, tourism, and other initiatives. And we have set up in the center this community, which is called Urbana Community, and it's of the Piaroa people. And behind the group, we have the Churuata, or Pureido, which is a traditional construction and it's the center of the Piaroa culture. So it is the place where the elders can sit with the younger generations to transmit all the knowledge. So one of our discussions with the team is how for the Ethnogeno Foundation, immaterial cultural heritage is not a result on itself for us, mm -hmm. but it serves both as a catalyst and as a mean to achieve or to work towards community well-being as well as for cultural and territorial preservation. And I will share and talk a bit more about this uh, throughout the presentation. So I wanted to share with you this map so that you can see a bit the areas that we work. And this is mostly in the indigenous reserves of the Orinoco and the Eastern Colombian Amazon. So as you can see, the number of hectares is very large. So it's 4,843,900 hectares. And we work with an estimated population of 55,000 indigenous people from around 20 ethnic different groups. So as you will see in the map, the red areas are the areas where we have centered our work. And you will see other reservation indigenous areas as well as national parks. So as I was saying before, from this experience, we have understood how immaterial cultural heritage works both as a catalyst and as a mean for building community well-being. And we have seen this very clear throughout this pandemic and how ICH serves as a base for these communities to strengthen the, their well-being and of course resilience as well. So this ICH understanding has allowed us to envisage our role as an NGO as that of supporting and accompanying community-based processes that entail ICH as a way of improving people's well-being. This, this case study that we have chosen of the Piaroa indigenous people is a beautiful one because we were able to visit them just before the lockdown in March. So by just a little bit, we almost stayed with them for, for all these months. And um, working with this indigenous group has allowed us to see how ICH um, and all the practices, the knowledge, the skills 
have served traditional groups for their survival, identifying those elements that may be important and valuable for today's context as well. So in alignment with the past idea, all of these ICH systems serve today's generations for their survival, for their sustainability. So it's not only because it's beautiful or because it's culturally valuable, but because it, it serves many other economic, environmental, so, social cultural, of course, functions in their livelihoods. So we have chosen three ways in which we have seen our role as an NGO in this process. The first one is supporting local ICAs, ICH research. Second, the importance of building bridges. And third, accompanying the Piaroa's own education process. So this is the first element that we want to share, and it's the support of local ICH research. And although we have working on this during many years, during the last year we started a strong process supported by the British Council. And local researchers decided to choose their own topic. Some of them started to research around agroecological systems, uh, asking the elders about uh, seeds and traditional ways of working their crops. Others chose to research around traditional architecture, and this is why we have the picture of the Pureido or Churata behind, because they built it as part of this initiative. And handicrafts, of course, which is very related to a particular way of approaching cultural material culture. And what we saw during this process of local research is how this knowledge was impacting nutrition processes by being able to bring traditional seeds and traditional foods into the table, gender roles, economy, and health. So here we're seeing how ICH is both useful and relevant. Of course, this became a challenge when the pandemic started. So we had to find quick ways of working and continuing supporting these local researchers from the distance. In this place, there's no phone coverage, there's no Wi-Fi. So we had to find ways when these people came to places where we could talk, we shared methodologies, they shared with us their most recent fundings, we had discussions. So it has been a, a, an important process of continuing this, the support of local research uh, from the distance. And this has resulted, of course, in the development of new methodologies. Second, the, import the importance of building bridges. So this has been a transversal approach of our work in building bridges between indigenous communities and non-indigenous groups of people, most important or not most important, but including, for example, governmental organizations, in the case of health, so how to include indigenous knowledge and indigenous worldviews in the health system for better. Also in terms of education, in processes of land rec uh, rights recognition, and as well in education. In this case of the pandemic, the topic around tourism has turned into a very important one. And I wanted to share a very important news is that we formulated or we designed a nature and cultural tourism proposal that was initiated by the community, the Pierre community. And we applied to a contest that we won two weeks ago so that this community can strengthen their tourism as a way of reactivating the, their economy. So this implies developing the touristic product that includes important elements of ICH, of how they want to share their traditional food, what they want to share about the way of managing their territory. And the idea is to work on this process for one year. And this combines with the process that has been happening uh, accompanied by the British Council. And these people are very happy in terms of, okay, there have been some tough months because 
uh, fishing tourism has had to stop because of the pandemic. We're not receiving tourists at the moment, but it has become an opportunity for the Piaroa people to think about this other type of tourism they would like to develop. So it's not only about tourists coming to fish in the rivers and then go back to the city, but it is a tourism that is based and values and it aims to recognize their cultural practices, their ways of managing the territory, the environmental impact that they have in terms of looking for biodiversity con conservation. And the third point is accompanying the Piaroa's own education processes. So we have been doing this for years, both in the formal and the informal context of education. So I have included this picture, which is an aerial a photography of the same Churuata and Pureido, the traditional building as a space of knowledge transmission. And in terms of COVID, this has also been an important process in term, as an NGO. So when we wanted to share lots of information about COVID, how does it work, how to prevent, uh, how to take care of people, la traditional language became a very important item. So we were able to work with translators and to bring all this information in Piaroa language to the people. So this allows the continuing the transmission of, lo of knowledge in their own language. And also we have started a new project that is supported by the Ministry of Culture here in Colombia of being able to share the handicrafts and the culture of Piaroa people in a digital platform, aiming to strengthen education systems, education as well towards the outside, not only within indigenous Piaroa people, but also with non-indigenous people. So to finish this presentation, I would like to emphasize how we have aimed for slow and long-term processes that prioritize listening, intending to understand the world from an indigenous perspective. We remain open to keep learning and sharing, wanting to be part of a larger global movement committed with learning from those groups that have transmitted through generations ways of living that embrace a responsible management of ecosystems, being conscious of their own well-being, as well as of the global population as a whole. And of course, in the midst of this pandemic, these people bring or share with us examples of how to be resilient and finding new ways of, work, of working. And specifically with the example of the new nature and cultural tourism project that we have started with them. So thank you very much and happy to continue listening from the rest of participants.